I would like to invite Mustafa Barghouti, gives us a current political situation, maybe also West Bank and Gaza. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the opportunity. So, Avi, from now on, we will call you Ibrahim to distinguish you from Abraham Records. Okay. Uh, I want to start, I'll try to be as short as possible, but the situation is really difficult to describe. Uh, I think what we see today in Gaza is the result of the fact that the world community, and especially the West, but not only the West, has failed to punish Israel and hold it responsible for the wars that happened in 2006, 2008, 2012, 2014, and 2021. Had any action been taken maybe we would have avoided this terrible, horrible war. What we see now in Gaza is a combination of three war crimes together at the same time, simultaneously. The ethnic cleansing, the collective punishment, and the genocide. We have 30 medical teams. I, I volunteer with a very important organization called Palestinian Medical Relief Society which works in Gaza, West Bank, and Jerusalem. We have 30 medical teams in Gaza, and what they tell us uh, about the situation is just horrifying. The number of people killed is 32,000, if we include those under the rubble, at least 32,000. And the number of people injured is 64,000, as was mentioned. We're talking almost about 100,000 people killed. Proportionally, this is more than all Americans killed in all American wars since, ninth, since the 18th century. Proportionally, this is 12 million people Americans killed or injured had this happened in the United States. 4% of the population of Gaza are now killed or injured. Israel threw on Gaza up till now 65,000 tons of explosives. That is one and a half times more than both Hiroshima and Nagasaki nuclear bombs that were thrown in Japan. It's 28 kilograms of explosives for each man, woman, and child in Gaza. And add to that, not only the killing by weapons, but also the killing by epidemics. We have now an outbreak of severe epidemics more than 7,000 cases of hepatitis, 120,000 cases of respiratory infections, more than 120,000 cases of gastroenteric infections. We are afraid that we might see an outbreak of cholera. We have definitely, are, we are going to see another out, an outbreak of measles because children don't have vaccinations for more than 100 days. And it goes on. The problem that the Zionist movement is facing is the fact that our numbers now in the, on the land of historic Palestine is equal to Israeli Jewish people, if not a little bit more. That is a fact despite the reality that Israel has displaced 70% of the Palestinian people in 1948 in the worst act of ethnic cleansing. And regardless of the fact that 7 million Palestinians are refugees not allowed to come home, while any Jewish person anywhere in the world can just land in Tel Aviv and become a citizen, and can live not only in Israel, but also in the West Bank, the occupied West Bank. Can go to Jerusalem anytime he wants, although I, who was born in Jerusalem and worked as a medical doctor there for 15 years, is not allowed to enter Jerusalem since 2005. This situation allows only for one of three options. Either Israel accepts to leave the occupied territories and accept a two-state solution, 
but a real two-state solution, which means evicting all the settlers from the occupied territories, including East Jerusalem, which they don't want to do, or accept a one democratic state from the river to the sea. Yes, democratic state with equal rights for everybody. And they don't want that. So what remains? What is the third option that remains? It's exactly what they are trying to do in Gaza, which is ethnic cleansing. And Smotrich has made it very clear that this Israeli government, in which he is the finance minister, has one program. He said, we will fill the West Bank with settlers and settlements so that Palestinians would lose any hope of a state of their own. And then they have to choose between leaving, which is ethnic cleansing, or accept a life of subjugation to Israelis, which is apartheid, or die, which is exactly the genocide they are trying to conduct. Netanyahu never negated these statements. And it's not true what some Western leaders say that this does not represent the Israeli government policy. This is the Israeli government policy. The ICJ resolution was very important. It spoke about, of course, we would have liked that it should have made the right conclusion of demanding immediate ceasefire, but nevertheless, the fact that it accepted to discuss the issue of genocide means that for the first time in history of this region, for the first time in 75 years, Israel lost its impunity in front of international law. That is very, very important. And when, it, when, when, when the resolution speaks about suspension of genocide, about not allowing advocacy, advocacy of genocide, about bringing back humanitarian aid to people, about bringing back the people who were evicted to their homes, that exactly, all of that, as was said, cannot be implemented without ceasefire. And that's why all the efforts have to go in that direction. Uh, I want also to alert you to the fact that Israel, United States is angry, angry at Israel. It's not angry at Israel because it is killing Palestinians. It's angry at Israel because it failed. It failed in, in, they gave them one month, two months, three months, now 112 days, and still they are failing. They couldn't destroy the resistance. They couldn't impose their occupation in the places where they have their tanks. They couldn't bring back the Israeli prisoners without exchange with Palestinians. And they couldn't enforce the ethnic cleansing, which was the first goal of this war in the very first days, and Netanyahu said that very clearly. So they failed. And what we see here is a, an amazing heroism of Palestinian people, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank, by the way, where Israel is conducting horrible attacks on Palestinians. West Bank is already reoccupied completely. PA doesn't exist. Israel took away any authority from the Palestinian Authority. Today, it's an authority without authority, not even in Area A. They took away even their ability to control our taxes, the taxes we pay to the PA, which their revenue. They are confiscating it, conducting piracy. Since the 7th of October, Israel arrested no less than 6,000 new Palestinians in West Bank, killed more than since the beginning of 2023, uh, <coughs> more than 540 Palestinians. And the worst thing is that you have 750,000 illegal settlers armed, armed to their teeth and attacking Palestinians continuously. And we face the, the worst example of double standard when we compare the, pos the positions of the Western countries in Ukraine with that in Palestine. It is so clear. And it is so shameful that just yesterday, I think Jeremy spoke about that, United States of America, Canada, Australia, Italy, decided to suspend emergency aid to UNRWA, 
which is providing health care and food supplies to Palestinians because they suspect that three or four participated in what happened on the 7th of October, but they do not, do not punish Israel for killing 102 of these UNRWA health and aid workers. None of that is mentioned. And that exactly happened ex after the ICJ resolution. This is how these countries translate ICJ resolutions. In my opinion, and I want to summarize, Israel is mobilizing not only the support of the West, it is mobilizing Islamophobia, racism, white supremacy, and all tendencies of fascism in Europe. Israel is in bed with these forces. And it is not surprising because this Israeli establishment is advocating Jewish supremacy, similar to white supremacy. That is the reality of today. And that's why I think, following the ICJ resolution, we have to work for specific eight points. And I want to mention them. First and foremost, immediate, permanent, ceasefire. We have to stop the crime. We have to stop the bloodshed. We cannot allow this to continue. With the passage of every hour, you have children killed, you have women killed, you have men killed, 11,000 children. It is totally unacceptable. Second, we have to bring in serious amount of humanitarian aid. And I will repeat here what I suggested in the very first days of this attack. 57 Arab and Muslim countries met in Saudi Arabia, and they declared that their resolution is to break the siege on Gaza. What did they do to break the siege on Gaza? Nothing. I propose, I think you proposed bringing in things from air, but I, I propose to send a convoy, a humanitarian convoy, including all humanitarian organizations, with 57 flags of these countries, with representatives, and challenge Israel. Challenge the siege on Gaza. We're not asking them to send armies to fight Israel. We want them to send a humanitarian convoy. This way, they can break the siege. But just to talk and do nothing is unacceptable. Third, the world must demand that Israel has to leave Gaza immediately and Israeli troops have to leave Gaza. And by the way, we should not accept the buffer zone they are trying to create around Gaza, which would cut away no less than 20% of the size of Gaza, which is only 140 square miles, and would destroy all the agricultural areas in Gaza, and will plant mines in these regions, practically annexing this area to Israel. Fourth. We need immediately to start preparing for, for groups that could go to remove all the mines and other unexploded weapon, uh, bombs in Gaza, because this is a very dangerous area now. Fifth, I call for all Arab and Muslim countries and all countries that support the rights of the Palestinians to go to the ICJ again with a third case because they have two cases now, the case of apartheid and the case of genocide, with a third case demanding, forcing Israel to compensate and pay for all the destruction it has caused in Gaza. I think this would be one of the best ways of deterring them from repeating this act of destruction again. Sixth, what the ICJ provided a very strong base for a wide world campaign of boycott, divestment, sanctions against Israel, as long as it is committing occupation, apartheid, and genocide. BDS is legal. BDS was the most important instrument that forced the apartheid system in South Africa to stop. And that's what we should use, and we should not be shy about it. Seventh, of course, the big question will be how to rebuild Gaza. I won't go into details of that. That's for later. But one last point is, please understand that we do not need any country in the world to tell us, as Palestinians, how we should govern ourselves. 
That's not the business of anybody. United States, Israel, or any other power does not have the right to dictate on us who should be ruling us. We want to do that through democratic elections. I know that for the time being, we cannot have elections now, but I also know, and I want you to know, that the cancellation of elections in 2021 was a major cause of what we see today. Had we had these democratic elections, we would have had a democratic pluralistic system and an end of division between Gaza and West Bank. And maybe we would not have had this war. Who was against elections? Israel. The great country of democracy, the United States of America. And of course, it was a huge mistake by the Palestinian Authority to cancel elections because the issue of Jerusalem, which we all agree with, we cannot have elections without Jerusalem, could have been easily resolved according to the resolution we took in Cairo when we met with all the other political forces, which is to challenge Israel and conduct elections in Jerusalem without their permission, making it one of the best acts of nonviolent resistance. What I'm trying to say is for us as Palestinians, we need now to work as hard as possible to create a unified national leadership, to create an interim government that is a national unity government accepted by everybody, but interim, because it has to prepare for free democratic elections. And we have the right to choose our leaders, our future, and our program. I want to assure you at the end, regardless of all this suffering, Israel will not be successful. They will not break us, and we will overcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Barghouti, and thank you for this re really concrete suggestions that I think the idea of this meeting bring the concrete suggestions.